We are here in sunny Long Beach, California for IANA Intermodal Expo, one of the best intermodal conferences of the year at one of the busiest ports in North America. How's your experience been so far? The experience so far has been absolutely wonderful. What's your experience been like at Expo? It's been incredible. So we will see you here at Intermodal Expo 2023. Hey, supply chainers, wherever you are in the world, this is Sarah Barnes Humphrey with you today. Are you ready? Let's talk supply chain. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Thoughts and Coffee. I hope you're having a great week so far. My name is Sarah Barnes Humphrey. I'm the founder and host of Let's Talk Supply Chain, the Blended Podcast, and the founder of the Blended Pledge. And we have a lot to cover today. But what I'm most excited about is that Audrey Ross is back with us for Thoughts and Coffee, and she's got so much to share. She's been doing lots of different things. So can't wait to have her up here. Uh, but first, we cannot do this show without our sponsors. So what are your business's supply chain challenges? Too much inventory on hand? Too many disruptions and stockouts? Are there just too many steps and touch points involved? Well, Fastenal can tailor a solution from automated bins that monitor your inventory 24-7 to vending devices that help you track and control the products that keep your businesses running. Go to Fastenal.com forward slash LTSC to see how. Fastenal, where industry meets innovation. All right, so what do we have lined up for you today? Well, we've got a brand new episode with Esker. Now, I'm not sure if you've heard of Esker before, and if you have not, you need to go and check out this episode wherever you listen to the Let's Talk Supply Chain podcast, Apple, Spotify, over on our website. It's episode 337, and we talk about transforming the way you work. One of the things that they are known for is best of suite and where companies go to elevate their teams to be rock stars because they're actually giving them back the time in their day to really be the supply chain rock stars that they need to be for the organization. So go and check that out. We are super excited to have them on the show and really excited for you to find out more on how they can help you with your supply chains. All right. So next we've got the secret society of supply chain. Now, if you have not signed up yet, so you're going to go to this website. The uh, link is in the comments. You're going to go through the quiz to find out which membership group is right for you. And we are very, very close to launching. There are a limited number of seats. And as soon as we launch, we're going to be letting you know exactly what you're in for as far as the membership groups. We've also written a blog. Now, we want to make sure that you go and uh, check out this blog, read up more about the membership options available to you because we have something for everybody in supply chain. So go and check it out. We're going to put the links to the quiz. We're going to put the links to the blog so that you can read up more about it. And uh, I can't wait to see you there. Now, next, we have a special announcement coming up in just a few weeks. But what I want to talk to you about is the Woman in Supply Chain Awards by Supply and Demand Chain. Now, the nominations are open. So head over there because they close July, I think, 14th. So if you have any women in your life in supply chain that you want to nominate for this award, head over to this link, nominate them while you can. It closes July 14th. And hopefully I'm going to see you over there um, at the award ceremony in Atlanta in November. And I can't wait to see everybody. What else is happening? We have, oh, Asia Pack has lots going on. So a Let's Talk Supply Chain Asia Pack has come out with a 10-part supply chain technology series. They've already dove into part three. So go and check out part one, 
part two, part three. This is with Monica, and she is the president of Wista Australia. Jonathan does a really great job of talking about the different options that are out there and what it actually means for you and your supply chain. So go and check that out. What else have we got going on? Oh, the intelligence perspective. Now, this is the true crime show in supply chain. This is their last episode. It's happening today at 1 p.m. Eastern. So definitely go and check them out live. They're talking about the power of networking. And then on Friday, where is it? I need to, yes, Friday, we've got DC coming up with the ABCs of planning and execution for a startup supply chain. So make sure to click the attend button because even if you cannot attend live, I will send you the recording as well. And then we've got a brand new LinkedIn Live with Farai. Um, I'm going to be hosting it. And we've got Stefan, the VP of products from Farai, joining me. And we're going to be talking about the top five ways to reduce your costs of delivery and returns. You're not going to want to miss it. It's coming up in a couple of weeks. Remember, click the attend button. I will send you the recording. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. All right. I think it's time to bring, I think I have spoken way too much and it's time to bring up Audrey. Hello, Audrey. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good, good, good. It's so good to see you. You fresh mm -hmm. off a trip to Washington. I am fresh back from, uh, from Washington, D.C. Uh, so I went uh, to Washington with the Organization of Women in International Trade. Um, so the international board was having their spring board meetings. And of course, we had chapters from all over the world. Um, so our president is in from Kenya, our vice president in from Geneva. Um, I came along with uh, my friend Susan from Toronto. We had Ottawa. We had Ghana. We had um, New York, Chicago, Washington. Um, and we had a great couple of days of, of business meetings. We were, um, you know, we're a board, so we have to update our bylaws sometimes. So that was our big project for this meeting. Um, and also just sort of figure out some of the, the activities for the rest of the year and how to keep um, us going in, into the future as well. So it was great. Um, these women are just amazing, women and men. Um, supporting uh, the advancement of women in trade. So it's a, it's a group I'm really, uh, really fond of. So, yeah. And we're both representing diversity in supply chain with our t-shirts today. Blended <laughs> is another group I'm really fond of. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> And we did not plan this, people. No. We literally just showed up and we were like, today is about yeah. diversity. Today, let's talk about making, you know, letting people be who they are and do their best, do their best job. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, yeah. before we get into the market update, I do mm -hmm. want to go over the poll of the week. And I've got a couple yes. of things to add to your market update. But let's talk okay. about this. Now, I wanted to ask this question on an airplane, who should get the armrest? I fly a lot and I'm usually in the window seat and... Um, um, you know, sometimes you're like fighting for that armrest. Sometimes people pull them up. So neither, nobody gets it. But I was curious to see what everybody thought. So 48% of you said everyone to the right should get the armrest. 44% of you said middle gets both. So we're kind of, you know, tied here, almost tied for wow. these two answers. I know you answered. What did you say? I said other Um I don't know. I, I just tuck, I just kind of tuck my arms in and, and I feel the armrest is like, you need to be it, inside the armrest. That's your space, you know? So we want to hear from you. If you are yeah. watching, put in the comments. What, <laughs> what you, is it? Uh, but I think, think everyone to the right also makes sense. I could get on with that. I don't think middle gets both. I think everyone's, if it's not, you sort of just tuck in a little bit, but also <laughs> this is talking about armrest, but also um, keep your legs you know, there's can be a little bit of the, the spread sometimes. And um, I know I've heard from other women who are like, oh, I felt like I had to like be so cramped up. And I was like, I push back. But um, and yeah. keep your shoes on people. Keep and definitely your keep your on. shoes on. I, I follow this woman on Instagram who travels a ton. And like it, it should not be there should not be that many images of people with their shoes off on an airplane. <laughs> Well, actually, another thing that I saw on TikTok was this woman was like, you need to travel with like packs of wipes because the wipes actually, she was like, it helps with, you can wipe your armpits, you can put them in your shoes, like to help with odor and things like that. And then obviously you can wipe all your seats and all that kind of stuff. But I yeah. thought that was interesting. I wanted to point out here that Chuck says life is a team sport. Middle gets both. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was like, really? Okay. <laughs> no, I love that answer. I love that answer. All right. Why don't you actually, I want to give a shout out to Nana and Fatima yeah. over on my personal LinkedIn. Thanks so much for joining us today. Now, give us a market update. What is happening in your world? What do people need to know about? Well, I took like three days off last week, so I'm like really loose on one. No. <laughs> That's not how supply chain works. <laughs> You're not allowed to take time off. Uh, no, no, we're seeing uh, we're seeing a bit of congestion um, through um, through Rotterdam. Um, it's pretty light, but it's you know we're picking up into the summer season as we head into June, July, and August. Um, Canada seems to be moving fairly well. Um, I do still find that our LCL shipments and the co-loading and the offloading is still quite lagging. Um, and that's more an issue of um, labor um, and staffing at the, the sort of almost last point warehouse or the terminal. Mm -hmm. um, so there's still issues there, which, which does make you a little concerned about what's going to happen again in June, July and August when it's a heck of a lot busier. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's been a really um, a, a, a low volume market prices are really good. Um, you know, but I think it's been low volume. So I, of course I ship all the time. We have some seasonal stuff, but we, we ship fairly regularly, but I think businesses who are more seasonal or businesses who are taking advantage of having a pandemic captive market at home. I think a lot of that has dropped. So I think we are still, you know, a lot of experts have said, you know, Lars Jensen, um, you know, a lot of reporters have been saying like, you know, it's a sort of a wait and see kind of year. So we just, is he still on a world rest? tour? Lauren? No, he's back. He's back. Mm -hmm. But it was like a 40 by eight day, but I, I'm really hoping he hasn't. Cause he's not, you know, he's not exactly an influencer, but he hasn't posted like a lot of stuff mm. about his trip. Right. And he was off on this sort of vessel between Antarctica and Argentina. And, you know, so I think we're all hoping he'll do like, you know, just a little, you know, a little more update. So before I go into my market update and a couple of things that I've heard, can I just go back to this armrest thing? Because yeah. everybody Did you see this comment on it. I've got Berkeley <laughs> on my personal LinkedIn. <laughs> what about the snoozer who leans onto your shoulder? Want to give you a shout out. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah. Karen also. Just hello. be kind. And then Sheldon says, like, this is life as a team sport. I mean, this is going based like this is actually, you know, yeah. talking about what Chuck said. Left side of the plane, the right arm gets the armrest right side <laughs> the, left think arm about gets that, the, yeah. the center aisle is the wild wild west <laughs> yeah. you can tell some of us choose the same kind of seat in the same spot <laughs> yes. a lot. all the time <laughs> anyway so my market update i saw recently i know we've talked about sheen on the uh show before yeah. Um, in regards to sustainability and fast fashion and things like that. They recently had a pop up in Toronto. And what I thought was interesting <laughs> was they were they were um, encouraging people to bring their items to be able to do some recycling. So, right. yes, you know, I understand the whole fast fashion and sustainability. They are hearing us. I think a little bit because they're giving people the opportunity to recycle the clothing that they're not necessarily using. I don't know. What do you think about that? I think they're one of the biggest greed washers in the industry. I think they're giving you that opportunity because it sounds like it's good, except they're the ones who've pushed you to buy all of this stuff through aggressive marketing and analytic campaigns. So, you know, they encourage, they, they, they encourage people to buy more stuff than what they need. Mm -hmm. They encourage it to be disposable. And the recycling piece just means that it gets dumped in Ghana or somewhere else that we can't see here in North America. So I don't know how great that is. And the other piece of it is to be able to buy clothing that cheap. There's no way that you're paying your workers an appropriate wage. Mm, that's right. You might be paying them, you know, according to the standards in that country. However, that's still kind of an excuse because you could pay them better. Mm -hmm. I wanted so, to bring it up because we still think they're problematic. I understand. <laughs> but we see these things on social media. Right. And we're like, oh, they're providing a pop up. We can recycle our clothing, yeah. Yeah. you know, but then there's yeah. all sorts of other things that are not necessarily being addressed. And so I wanted yeah. to bring that up. The other one is Cupshe. So I saw a post on Instagram oh, the other day talking about the return options. So these are the options that some retailers are giving to their customers. 70% refund, self ship. And okay. I guess they give the return label or keep the item and get 130% off coupon. So the person that actually posted this took the 130% off coupon and kept the item. Yeah. 
So I'm kind of curious about these options, because at the end of the day, we've talked about how returns are one of the costs, costliest part yeah. of supply chain, especially for yeah. retailers. Yeah. And now they're offering for people to keep the item, which I'm not sure is good or not, because at the end of the day, if they're keeping the item that they didn't want in the first place or it doesn't fit, what are they doing with that? Where is it going? Mm -hmm. And then they're getting 130 percent off, which means they're getting free items. Yeah, free plus. And so how how does that work into the returns situation in the fact that it's costly? Is it a lot cheaper to be able to pr provide that coupon, get them to keep the item than it is to actually get an item returned, put it back into inventory and resell it? I imagine someone has crunched those numbers. And yes, it's a lot less expensive to have them keep it hmm. than it is to have it come back. Like that's how expensive it is. It's, it's very expensive to have it come back, have to redeal with it. And there's the risk that it's not resaleable, mm. right? Like it's, yeah. I mean, it's the same in, it's the same in boutiques and stores. If you get deodorant or makeup all over it while you're trying it on, then it's not exactly, re then you have a dry cleaning cost potentially, or it's just not resaleable. So right. I think, I don't know, you know, returns are, are probably going to be the biggest problem of the next you know, a couple of years because we've really gotten, you know, we really got into this push and this out model and then no one really thought about <laughs> how to deal with them and, and what the cost would be. So absolutely. Yeah. Well, we've got a couple of questions from the audience yeah. that I do want to address before we go into the article. So Brittany yeah. says, what do you think would be the best advice to a newcomer in the world of supply chain management? Mm -hmm. um, I, I'll start off. I think for me, the best advice is to just get in there and try everything that you possibly can. Yeah. There are so many aspects to supply chain. I mean, look at the media side. It wasn't even a word until like 2018. Until like five years ago, yeah. And there's so many different opportunities, so many things that you can do. So you need to get in and try things and find out what you're good at, what you're not good at, what you'd like to do, mm -hmm. what you don't like to do, and then carve a path and career. We have mm -hmm. a lot of advice on our Woman in Supply Chain series. Yeah. So go and check that out on letstalksupplychain.com. Just my mm -hmm. two cents. Audrey? Yeah, I would say be a little mindful of the trainings and certifications that are available out there and really make sure you investigate them and check with people mm -hmm. who've taken them so that you, you know, because almost all of us have taken at least one. So, you know, we can comment on that experience and what it gives you because some of them are very expensive. And I feel like, um, you know, maybe this is just me or, or my, like my experience was I felt like I needed to have a bunch of certifications to feel um, qualified in my role. And that's, you know, this supply chain is still a lot about on the job experience. So mm -hmm. instead of sort of spending money on some of those trainings, um, it would have maybe been better for me to take some time to understand how to show what I've been learning in my in my day to day job. So just you can be a bit careful about where you're investing your money and really do that research. And there's so many amazing people um, on LinkedIn and in this community who are happy to give you advice like that. Or, you know, mm -hmm. when you have a specific question, like, Oh, do I try this course or this course, put it as a poll on LinkedIn. Honestly, you'll get so much feedback from people, yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, and then you can kind of take, take that to mind. And can I just say kudos to Brittany for coming yeah. on a live show like this and exactly. asking a question because exactly. we're putting that up on the screen. Those are yeah. the things that you should be doing. Yeah. Getting into a career in, really any sort of industry, but supply chain for sure. Yeah. That's how you're going to get noticed, network, all that kind yeah. of stuff. We've got one more from a LinkedIn user. I'm sorry. I don't know who you are. Do you think that shipping costs will decrease in coming future? How about the container shortages worldwide? Well, I don't, I don't know. They can go much lower. <laughs> yeah, well, I was going to say they've actually <laughs> come down quite a bit. Really good prices. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then about the container shortages worldwide, I mean, that is probably a discussion for another day. And I've probably mm -hmm. got some experts that I can bring on. We did talk about that, I believe, in the LinkedIn Live that yeah. we did with IANA and TTX. Yeah. So if you go to the Let's Talk Supply Chain YouTube page, uh, go and check out that video. That one. And because um, yeah, we talked 2023 about remains like a reset year, right? So we had containers yeah. pile up on certain routes. And so mm -hmm. now you're seeing stuff they're trying to shift back into, you know, yeah. but how can they predict what's going to be the busiest route for, I know. know.
That's hard. They do their best. Okay. So we've got 10 minutes left. We still haven't gotten to our article. So let's get <laughs> to our first one. So this article talks about reliable supply chains. But my question is, what does a reliable supply chain mean? Or what does it even look like? They're talking about in this article that it's a diverse supplier base and it's a de-risked supply chain. I mean, de-risk supply chain, is that even possible? I mean, you can de-risk it to a certain point. I'm just not sure if you can do that 100%. Um, and then it goes into some of the risks that we're facing in 2023. One of those is lack of workforce. Number two is cybercrime and cargo theft. Now, overhaul with the Intelligence Perspective show. If you go to Let's Talk Supply Chain YouTube page, go and check out that playlist. I talk about it being the true crime of supply chain. That's exactly what it is. They talk about ca uh, cargo theft all the time. Yeah. $223 million of cargo was stolen in 2022. And 95% of all cyber attacks are because of human error. Now, mm. I have a cyber uh, security um, expert coming on at the end of the month to Thoughts and Coffee. So make sure that you don't miss, th miss out on that. And I'm heading to Miami in about 10 days to the Firmament Conference. And we're also going to be talking about the risks that cybersecurity brings to supply chain. So really, really hot topics right now. And I implore you to go and check out some more of the content out there. Mm -hmm. um, and stay tuned for some of the content that we're going to come up with or we're gonna, we have coming up. Um, on these particular topics. Audrey, what do you think? Yeah, I think I think cybersecurity is a big one. And I think there was a study that that was done that even if you just, it doesn't have to be intensive training to your employees, but even if you go over the kind of most common, um, you know, kind of phishing, um, botware, scan, like even if you just go over four or five most common things that they might encounter, um, you know, especially once when you've onboarded them, like who to watch out for. Oh, like Jennifer, our CEO is going to send you an email for so that you give her $5,000. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it, you, you kind of get caught off guard, right? Especially if you're new, but then also to do it again. But they said, if you even just do the basics, you have like a 26% reduction in the, in the risk of cybersecurity. So it's not, you know, with, it can be pretty, pretty light for you to do it, but it is kind of a tough one. Yeah, I'm excited for the thoughts and coffee when I get back from Miami, because in the panel discussion, they're going to be talking about tips and different things that people actually need to put into place so that this 95% of attacks because of human error actually don't happen. So stay yeah. tuned because I'm going to share all those findings. Um, I want to say hi to Benita over on my personal LinkedIn as well. Thanks so much for joining us. Now, our second article is about how the pandemic has changed supply chain management profession forever. Can mm -hmm. I just tell you, supply chain, the word supply chain, supply <laughs> chain management, we were so happy throughout the pandemic that it became, you know, mainstream. People started to understand supply chain and what we do in supply chain. Now I'm not entirely sure that we might be regretting that just a little <laughs> bit because if there is no inventory of one particular item, I feel like supply chain is now being blamed for everything, no matter the reason. <laughs> and they actually mentioned this in this article. What did you think, Audrey? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think that I think I think Sheldon this comment. This is really good. Really, really good. Mm -hmm. Delivers consistency in the face of variability. Love that. Thank and that's our challenge that. every day. That's a great one. And yeah. I think and in relation to this as well, I, I think I don't know. I think people heard about supply chain. Mm -hmm. I think they tossed the, the words around. I don't know that they understood what goes into <laughs> it. And so then now, of course, it's like, this is a problem. This is wrong. You're like, okay, but Okay. <laughs> you know, and I think, I think there is, I think there is a shift in consumer behavior that we're coming up against. Mm -hmm. um, I think there is a shift in the way people or the location of where people want to be manufacturing their goods. There's a big push to be a bit more local. Um, and then you also have the, the pushes that we were already having where you had this, this circular supply chain or the sustainable supply chain was sort of, you know, pre-pandemic was sort of a five-year horizon, right? Everyone has a 2025 goal and a 2030 goal. Um, and then we also knew about these fuel changes and shipping. So I think there's, there's always been a lot of variabilities. Um, but the key now is to kind of 
reset and re-understand what your supply chain is so that you can kind of redesign it um, to mm -hmm. match what the current conditions are and then keep going with the, the usual sort of add in that extra buffer, add in that extra, um, you know, in pricing and time to, co to compensate. But yeah. And let's collaborate and not go back to definitely. blaming each other. That's <laughs> not, yeah. Let's not go back to blaming, Please. but also let's not go back to like hoarding resources. And there mm -hmm. are still ways that we saw in the pandemic where people were collaborating really on things like, like moving your goods or, um, you know, sharing manufacturers and, and our friend Gary Newbury talks, talks about this a lot. Like if you know that you're, customer or someone else is also using the same manufacturer how can you work together to make sure everyone's getting you know you're not coming in and pushing like well mine is a priority and everybody else can just whatever right. like that we're that we're sharing and like and learning how we can then ship together and save on costs or then we can you know use the same same materials so that it's not so expensive or understand what what the material shortages are like there's collaboration is still remains your quote remains true <laughs> and let's just make sure that the word supply chain don't end up being a scapegoat. Yes. One of the other things that they talk about in this particular article is agility and resilience not being the same. Yes, Agile and agility means that you're moving quickly and you can pivot quickly. Resilience yeah. means that you're prepared. I think yeah. sometimes we use those words interchangeably as we're talking about supply chain. And I like the fact that they actually talked about how different the difference is in those particular yes. words and what yeah. they mean. And then at the end of the article, it says supply chain will never be the same. Isn't that <laughs> so true? All right. So our last article is about construction. So we are building stuff that builds stuff. What they're talking about is in the U.S., they are breaking ground on so many different manufacturing facilities. One of the things that is, or two things that are driving that is that billions are being poured into sem semiconductor manufacturing and EV battery production. The question that I have for you, because this is, this is great. This is part of the nearshoring conversation, bringing some of those um, goods, those those materials, those things that we need to be able to control that we saw in the pandemic, we lost control over. And I think mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to do is bring the manufacturing back, you know, for the battery production for the semiconductors. Mm -hmm. But the question that we have in this particular um, article is, do we have the workforce? The National Association of Manufacturing says they're still short 800,000 workers. And yeah. so it's all well and good that we build the, these facilities and we want to bring that manufacturing back to North America. But the challenge will be the workforce. What did you think about this one? Yeah, I think it's I think it's important to to see that um, that there is this spending and that there is this emphasis on on this sort of reshoring, sure shoring, near shoring, because that does in in the minds of most people bolster the reliability of your supply chain. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> being cognizant that we don't actually have maybe the labor to fill these jobs if we're sort of already struggling to fill jobs across the market. Um, and so this is this is where that technology really can come into play. So when you're building these manufacturing facilities, if you look to automotive, automotive already utilizes a lot of um, robotics and automated automated tools. And mm -hmm. so are these new um, facilities as well going to be built with that in mind where it's less of a, a sort of, oh, I can just hire a human to kind of do this little part. And it's like, no, let's really think through what the what the workflow is going to be and see if we can automate as much as possible so that the human is sort of um you know being in a position to upskill and then manage empower um, and that robotics and and that's what it's about most of us want want sort of better jobs most of us want to have have sort of that improved knowledge um i think some of the gap is that upskilling is where do you get that upskilling um you know in that in that training and uh how do we do that so going back to the risks and the cybersecurity mm -hmm. comment, Olu Tola um, says that collaboration in supply chain is very key. So he agrees with us on that yeah. and how it, it, you can be hacked if not secured properly. So thank yeah. you so much for sharing that. And thanks so much for one. being with us today. Now, we've only got about 45 seconds. And I do want to tell you where we are going to be. So, of course, we've got the intelligence perspective. Last show for overhaul coming up at 1 p.m. Eastern. Join them live Friday. DC is back live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Mm. Audrey and I are going to be, I think, you haven't confirmed. I'm going. Yet. I'm going. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, Home I'm in. Delivery World, June yeah. 14th and 15th. We are recording episodes on site. I'm recording some exclusive content as well for the Secret Society of Supply Chain. And we're both going to be on stage. So that's going to be a lot of fun. And then I'm also going to be at Firmament in just about 10 days. Um, it's an invite only event. Um, and we're going to be talking about all things supply chain. And I can't wait to bring back some of those insights to you. So that's it for us today. Audrey, thanks so much. It was so great to have you back. Yeah. Thanks so much to everybody in the audience as well for joining us. Thanks, Audrey. Thank you, Sarah. Have a great week, everyone. Have a great week.